Good afternoon, everybody. Uneducated economist here. So, got a couple of links I want to share with you guys. Um, one of them is talking about the housing market. I will leave the links down in the description, as always. That's you can always find the links down in the description of my videos. Uh, but talking about the housing market, this is a pretty interesting one because right now there is a lot of talk about a downturn in the United States housing, mainly be because of the interest rates rising and the mortgages that the people would pay would have a higher interest rate attached to those mortgages, making the payments ever more difficult on the average person. And therefore, the asset prices would generally start to come down if that's the case. Now, the only thing that would hold that up is the inventory levels. Like, if the inventory level stays incredibly tight like it is, it's going to keep the demand for homes elevated. If there is a demand for homes, the prices will stay elevated as well. So this is where the big question begins to come. Is there going to be bigger demand for homes coming into the future, especially with the idea of higher interest rates? That has a lot of people fearful, saying that if these higher interest rates hit the mortgages and it happens to be, you know, it happens to continue to go on, that it's going to put a headwind on these house prices, home sales, you know, home building, all this stuff is going to start having some major issues going on with it. So really, is there going to be a buyer coming into the future? That's the bigger question. Well, take a look down at the description, find that link talking about how there is a bunch of Chinese buyers, real estate buyers who are looking to move back into the United States. Now, it was like 2017, 18, something like that, where there is there was a lot of of foreign buying coming into the United States and the majority of that foreign foreign buying of real estate was Chinese based. So the Chinese were very much involved in the United States real estate leading up to 2017-18. But then when the COVID restrictions started kicking in and everybody was basically put on travel restrictions and they weren't allowed to leave, well, made it difficult to leave, made it difficult to try and do business on, on a global scale. So a lot of these Chinese buyers who were typically buying into the into the United States real estate haven't been there. They've been out of the game for the last couple of years. Well, they're coming back, and that's going to be a huge impact on the housing market here in the United States as these new buyers, new foreign buyers, start to flood in. Now, this has like a couple of reasons behind it. I mean, one of them, the the real estate in China right now is not doing well. So if you're a Chinese real estate investor and you're looking at the Chinese real estate saying, man, this isn't comfortable at all, I would much rather be over in the United States where things seem to be doing much better as far as like prices not falling. So if you were a Chinese real estate investor, you'd be more eyed, more eyeing the United States as opposed to the local Chinese real estate. And then on top of that, right now, there is a lot of talk about a global slowdown, global recession, stuff like that. Global turmoil, especially when you think about like Russia and Ukraine and war starting. This has people getting very fearful. And when people are fearful, they start moving into the United States, dollar denominated stuff. Mainly, if they're going to be in cash, they like moving into the U.S. treasuries because treasuries are the closest thing to cash, but yet still get a little bit of an interest rate to it. But it's not just like U.S. Treasuries people want to be into. If you're, an, if you're an investor who's looking to actually do an investment, then you could go and be in the United States market, real estate, stocks, stuff like that, and then not have to be a subject of the communist government rule coming from China, like investing in China as opposed to investing in the United States. So this is going to bring in, especially if you have like some major global turmoil taking place where the war actually turns into something that's legitimate and starts spreading and getting more people ever fearful about what's going to take place, that's going to push ever more people into the United States trying to find that safe haven. Now, take a look at the second link that I have down in the description because this one is showing the death cross of the NASDAQ. Now, the death cross is a pretty interesting indicator. It's, it's a set of moving averages. So if you take the 200-day moving average and compare it to the 50-day moving average, when the 50-day moving average drops below the 200-day moving average, that's considered a death cross. That's where like, you are going to have some major issues taking place with the market perception, thinking that there is definitely a downturn coming. But look at that link. And there was another death cross that happened to the NASDAQ, I believe, back in 2020. But if you notice, it was from that huge market drop 
an almost immediate return. And you can see the death cross didn't actually happen until after the market started to return and was almost like almost back to where it was before the death cross actually happened. Because it was such a dramatic drop and rise so quickly that the average brought, or the 50 day moving average was able to come down below the 200, but yet the market was already starting on its way back up. This is not that case. Right now, we had the markets kind of topping off, teetering, dropping a little bit, and now the 50 day moving average is dropping below the 200 day moving average on the NASDAQ. The Dow, the S&P, I think those ones are still, you know, fairly positive as far as the 50 day above the 200. But the NASDAQ, and if I remember right, I think it was the Russell 2000 or is really close to, to crossing over. If that continues, I would imagine that you're probably going to start seeing some panic within the markets and they're going to try and get out of those, of those positions before it drops any further. So it's definitely something to keep an eye on as this continues onward. And I tell you, it's like really has, it can really have an impact when all of a sudden like the market says, oh man, we're in a selling position. Like before there, there wasn't anybody out there who thought that there was gonna be a downturn to the market. They thought it was just gonna go up forever. But now here we are, the Federal Reserve hasn't done anything yet, right? They haven't raised interest rates. They haven't tried to reduce their balance sheet. They've reduced the amount of purchases they have made, but they really have done nothing as far as tightening the monetary policy. But the market's perception of what's going on right now is full on monetary tightening taking place and that the interest rates are going to go through the roof and that there is going to be a global slowdown taking place. It's all perception. It's it's 100 percent perception. Now, does that mean the Federal Reserve won't raise rates? Absolutely not. They will definitely, definitely raise rates. There is zero doubt in my mind that they are going to do it. However, they are not going to be able to raise them significantly, not to the not to the 5% on the Fed funds level, which would be like their ultimate goal because that would give them enough firepower to deal with the next recession. Unfortunately, that is just not going to be the case. They're going to hit one and a half, maybe 2%. And that's going to be the neutral territory. That's where the Federal Reserve is neither restricting nor accommodating the economy. They are neutral, right at that 15 to 2% on the Fed funds level. If they go above that, which they might, to try and bring that inflation expectation down, if they get it up above that 2 2.5%, they are not going to be able to keep it there very long before they will immediately reverse course. So if they do take it into that territory, either one, inflation is running extremely rampant and they can't control it, and so they're going to go up above the neutral rate to try and constrict the economy. That would be one way to do it. The other way, I mean, well, there is no other. That would be the only way to really deal with it. If they do raise it up above that, like I said, they are going to constrict the economy and they would probably almost immediately have a reversal to it. At least that's my opinion on it. All right, I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, just wanted to let you guys also know that, like, cause yesterday I mentioned it in the live stream. I went to the Breakfast Club, uh, went to the movie, The Breakfast Club last night in, in Sod. We have an old school theater here in Astoria. It's called the Columbia and they show old movies in there. And I tell you, it was a lot of fun sitting in that old theater, watching that old movie. They even had the old previews like from Teen Wolf and stuff like that. It was it was really fun. And um, I really love that movie. It, you know, when you think about like, here you had these kids who come together who are so different and sharing their experiences and their life and their family, home life and stuff. Um, it really takes me back and, you know, reminds me of, uh, of the times growing up and stuff. So... Anyway, just wanted to share that with you guys as well. Uneducated economist, you guys let me know.